What's going on guys? Jay Hoyt back with you today. Welcome back to NHL 20 and this is a video I've been working on for a little bit now and let's just start with this. When I ended my Be A Pro series, you know what we made it to the Stanley Cup Finals, we ended up losing in Game 6 versus Anaheim, I think, or was it Anaheim? Or somebody, I don't know, I don't remember anymore. We lost against somebody. And I said in that video that I was going to make one more video on Be A Pro that would, you know, kind of go over all the things I liked, didn't like, things I'd like to improve on, you know, things that, you know, could be better about the game mode with easy fixes, with, you know, big overhaul changes. And I got some things here, you know, obviously there's probably so much more that you could add to this game mode, but this is what I came up with just as a start. So let's improve the beginning right when you enter in a be a pro now obviously i'm going back into the be a pro with nikita bako so you'll see that in the background but right in the beginning right you have three options either the memorial cup start in the chl or choose your team now those options aren't terrible but there should be more right you have players like austin matthews that just say went overseas, played in the, what was it, the NLA, I believe, played over against men, and it helped him out, right? And he played against, you know, more stronger competition to challenge himself, and it was a great story. Not just, a, okay, you dominated the juniors, and, you know, you took a year, and then you're a superstar. You know, it took, you know, a little bit of time, right? He wasn't that superstar the first year. I mean, he was very good, but he wasn't that superstar the first year. So maybe we add a couple more options, right? You have college, which is huge, right? You know, everyone, not everyone, but a lot of players come from the college system. And, it, you know, obviously you don't have that option in this game. So we've had basically the same three options for a while now. So maybe it's time to add in college and even overseas, right? You have lots of prospects you can, you know, draft from all these different leagues and everything, but you can't actually pick that for be a pro. So after you picked your start, right, the Memorial Cup, the choose your team, start in the CHL, now you go to get drafted. If you pick one of, you know, Memorial Cup or start in the CHL, now you want to go get drafted. So pretend you play in the, in one of the junior, well, you have to play one of the junior leagues. But now's the time to get drafted, right? You can play through all of that. Now's the time to start your future, right? Now you want to pick your team or get drafted by a team. But now you go into a basic, super boring, not personal at all draft. Now you don't meet with any teams, which you can do in franchise mode. You don't meet with any teams, right? No interviews, no nothing. But you go into this this menu with the hopes of you know being that top draft pick now you do have those pop-ups that say hey you're a top 10 pick you're a top, you're a first round pick you're whatever that you go into the draft not knowing now if you are clearly above and beyond anything in the juniors most likely you're going to go number one and usually the team that has the first pick will have the first pick going forward but like, there's no going on stage, getting your jersey, meeting with your team's, you know, staff, scouting staff, c coach, GM, nothing like that. You don't get up there, shake the commissioner's hand, do interviews, media, you know, all of that huge excitement, right? Because at that point, you're about to turn pro, right? You're about to be a draft pick for an organization. Now, whether it takes you five years to get to the NHL or it takes you after the first day, whether you're a superstar right away, right, you still want that moment, that moment of having yourself on stage with your family cheering in the crowd, getting that jersey, taking those pictures, right? Everyone knows what I'm talking about, right? You've seen a draft before if you've seen NHL. So that leads to the next thing with menus and the experiences of the game. Now you look at the screen I'm on right now. Now obviously we're in the off season right now, right? This is basically, I mean, actually we're actually, right before the uh, the next training camp. Look at the menu system in Be A Pro, right? You have, the normally you'd have a play game or simulate game thing where it says sim to next season. You have your points, you have your stats, 
for the rest of the league, and then you have your calendar on your main screen. Super basic, super boring, right? You have your player standing on the right-hand side there that just keeps going back and forth in the same little position the entire time you're on this game mode. Right, second screen, my pro, not a lot of options, right? During the season, a couple of ones added there. Skill tree, I mean, eh, that could definitely be improved. Coach feedback is atrocious. We'll get to that later on. Player growth just kind of sees your stats. Edit player, you can go and edit your player. No big deal there. But this kind of, I think I have this later on, but I'm going to say it now anyway. Why can't you change your position? Now, personally, myself in this game mode, we found chemistry on the power play with Nico Heischer and Kyle Palmieri. Now, myself, I was a center in this game mode. A center. Now, obviously, if you know New Jersey, they already have Jack Hughes and Nico Heischer as their two number one, basically that dynamic duo, number one center. But now you add in me into the mix, now it has to force one of those guys to the wing because they're not going to put that high of an overall on the third line. It doesn't make sense. So, most of the time, I can't actually see it, but I would be, you know, on you know, one of the second or third line, and it would keep Jack Hughes, Nico Heischer, and Kyle Palmieri together for the most part. Then you had a couple of other random players that joined our team, such as Mikel Bakker, and uh, I think that was kind of it, just him. But still, high, or higher rated player, not really, but an 84 overall definitely made, you know, one of those top two lines, and it just, again, why couldn't I change my position to be a left wing or be a right wing? And, you know, not have to take face-offs. And they have that, you know, dynamic duo down the middle and move myself to a left wing. And I could have played with Nico Heischer and Kyle Palmieri. Now, the next thing. Now, I know when you went to scouting and everything, well, we were playing right in the playoffs. We went through each individual team, saw who was doing what. But that was kind of lame, right? I wanted to go into a screen, right, where you see, I guess it's not on this one, but you could see view lines, of other teams, right? You can do it in franchise mode, so it wouldn't be that much more to add it to this game mode. But to be able to see the other teams, pl like players and lines and everything, is huge, right? I don't want to just go to team leader and points and go into the thing, right? And go into stats central and then have to scroll through each individual team. Like if I want to see Nashville, just say, like I don't want to scroll through this, right? I mean, yeah, that's what I want, but also I want to see these guys' lines. Right? Who's playing where? Who's playing with who? Who? Which line sucks? Like, you know what I mean? I want to be able to see that. The other thing is scouting reports. Right? This team's struggling recently. This team sucks in the power play recently. What about penalty kill? They're struggling there, or they're doing really well, or they're on a hot streak, cold streak. Right? They've been really good recently. In the past ten, just say. But there's no kind of like you know those little um. What's that snowflake and like a little fire icon that they've had in the past? That type of thing is what I'm talking about, right? Another thing that went away that could be easily implemented back into the game to show off, you know, if a team's doing well recently, do, you know, sucking recently, cold in the power play, you know, whatever it may be, you could show that rather easily. Now, not just to add all of the things I just said to a menu, right? In other games, people have phones, they have laptops. They have tablets, whatever it may be. They have some kind of something that they can see lines, see scouting reports, see other team stuff. And, you know, it's super basic, right? Just a, you know, unbranded phone that's similar, right? We've had the Blackberries in the past when it came time to trade deadline time. And, you know, you could see each individual trade proposal. Why can't we have something like that back maybe with a fake iPhone or whatever type of phone that you could see everything you want to see in that screen. Plus, it would add something new, right? At the bottom of the screen, you could click the whatever, the X button, and it would go to your phone, and you could see all that cool stuff. But now, once you improve all of that stuff, once you get into the game mode, you get all ready for training camp, now's the time to get into the gameplay. Now, personally, every time or I should say most of the time when I went into a game, when I went to play a game, you jump into the game itself 
and there wouldn't really be any commentary, no cutscenes, no anything to, you know, be special that it's your first game. Right? I don't remember what year it was. It might have been back to like NHL 12. But at least, you know, show me lining up in the hallway. Or show me walking out of the locker room. Or, you know, that traditional going out in warm-ups before everyone else, taking a couple of laps, shooting the puck a couple of times. Right, Have that little fun tradition. Your teammates laughing on the side, a couple of cutscenes, Whatever it may be, right? Make it special. Make yourself a pro, not just a created player. Because that's literally what it feels like right now. Now, once you continue to play the game and you've ranked yourself up and leveled yourself up and made yourself a good overall and you really like the team you're playing for and you want to take that next step, be that leader for the team, right? You have that captain status, that alternate captain status. Now, I've had it where I've gotten it within the first two years in the game mode or I've had it that I never had it in the first 10 years I've played. So I'd like to, if there was a system that's like, okay, you gotta, you know, just say if there was media in the game, right? That would show that you're sticking up for your teammates on and off the ice, that it would be, you know, more towards team play. And, you know, you could have a way to kind of get, you know, work towards that captain status, that alternate captain status, or be a leader on the team. Now, in FIFA, they have different, I think they're called traits, where you could have a long throw-in, you could be a leader, a solid player, you know, all this different stuff. Well, there's one on there that's like leader or natural leader or whatever the heck it is. Why can't they have stuff like that in NHL, right? They have all those perks and everything for EASHL and World of Chell and everything. But why can't we have that but a tiny bit different added in to be a pro? Just those, you know, leader, you know, more of a physical guy, right? You just want to stick up for your teammates and make sure things are in line, right? That type of player. Or if you want to be that superstar, that you know what I mean? Like, you could do so much more than what you have right now. Now, the biggest complaint I think I've ever had with NHL be a pro. Now, you see myself in game right now. And I'm sorry the gameplay, you know, isn't really exciting, but... You know, without going to every single other game that's out there and comparing and contrasting and getting gameplay from games I don't have and trying to find gameplay of exactly what I'm talking about is very difficult. But just kind of bear with me. So the next thing, a better system for maintaining your line. Now, myself personally, I've always been a player that, you know, I've always wanted to get a lot of points and play physical. Right? I want to be that do-it-all, power forward, two-way forward, whatever you want to call me, you know, that type of player. But sometimes, since I made myself a player, a playmaker in the game, that it expects me to be perfect offensively all the time. Now, the problem with that is that you don't know your strategies and all that stuff. You don't know where you're supposed to be on offense. You don't know what the coach is saying right, of how he wants you to play. Now, I know that may be getting too in-depth and too realistic, but there's got to be some offensive strategy or something that could, you know, provide better coach feedback and overall make your gameplay a little bit better, other than just kind of skating around like an idiot, trying to find the puck and make a play. But with your, you know, different player type, if you don't follow that perfectly, and do everything that the coach feedback says, right? If you want to chop it when it's in your defensive zone and it's a terrible play, but coach says to do it anyway, stuff like that I hate, right? If you don't do that, you're going to get demoted down lines, even if you're leading your team in points and playing super well and putting up points consistently, you're going to get dropped down to the third line. Now, personally, in the playoffs, we were a solid third line, right? I think we had, what, Miles Wood, ourselves, and Pavel Zaka, we were that energy line, that go out there, get stuff going, energy, hits, momentum, whatever it was, we were that line. But I always wanted to be on those top two lines. And I definitely had the skill, definitely had the points, definitely had the chemistry with the players up there that I 100% could have made that work. Now, again, that goes back to changing of positions that, you know, okay, I suck at face-offs. Would you like to change your position? 
to a left wing or a right wing, maybe go back to defense, whatever it may be, right? You want to change that for the best experience possible. And personally, I probably should have made myself a left wing, but you know, I wish there was also an option to do that in the game mode. But overall, that entire coach feedback and coach system does not make sense and definitely needs a massive change. Now, what you could do to fix it, I don't really know. I'm just talking about what needs to be changed. You know, we could go into a whole second separate video of everything that needs to be changed, but this is just what we thought of so far. And then once you lead, led your team to the Stanley Cup Finals and you prepare for that offseason and your contract's up, right? You Now, you have the decision whether you want to stay with the same team or you want to move on to a different team for some new experiences. So you go into the off season, right? You get to July 1st or whatever date it is, and your agent pops up and says, hey, I got like two offers for you for money that means nothing. And uh, what team do you want to sign with? Now it shows you the last year's records and it shows you the amount of people in your position. So if I were to sign with just say Nashville and they had 13 centers in the entire organization, that doesn't help me, right? How many good players do they have, right? How much, you know, is fan helping? Like, how much does playoff intensity help their rank? Or or what does that team expect from me, right? Do they expect me to be a top two-line player, a middle six, you know, centerman, a, a, you know, fourth liner? Like, what do they expect of me? You know, how many players are actually competing for, you know, spots in the NHL? You know, if centers were filled up, could I change position? You know, there's so much that you could possibly do with be a pro that would be very simple to implement because they've done it in either other game modes or in different titles that they could not necessarily just copy and paste, but get the idea from somewhere else, make it your own, and then implement it into the game to make your game even better. Now, be a pro, although it's added, you know, a couple of things here and there, other game modes got massive updates to them, you know, somewhat recently. And I feel like be a pro just, there's nothing to play for. And it, although I know you're trying to be a pro, but you're literally just being a creative player playing in a season, right? You might as well play in franchise mode and create a player beforehand and then sign him to whatever team you pick. Because there's basically no difference. But, you know, with all that being said, let me know what you guys think, right? If you play Be A Pro, if you play Franchise Mode, if you play other game, I should say sports games that have a better career mode, Be A Pro, Live The Life, um, Be A Player, whatever they're called in other games, let me know. What could make NHL be a pro even better or what have you seen in those other games that could be implemented in nhl you know let me know all those down in the comment sections below but with that being said guys i'm gonna wrap this one up here if you did enjoy hit the like button down below if you haven't already hit the subscribe button and as always guys we'll see you next time